Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. It's great to see you today and to welcome you to Iona Hope. We invite everyone to participate fully in our services, including receiving communion. Uh, we do that in procession here up the center aisle. I will be in the center giving out bread. There will be wine to either side. You may receive just the bread or the bread and the wine. Uh, it is your decision. Uh, but we're glad you're with us. I'm not making any other announcements. Let us be still and know that God is God. be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let's be God's kingdom, now and forever. Almighty and gracious Father, 
We give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to all Israel, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the houses of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading that portion of the psalm on the screen. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you will. Thank you. 
A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God, grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God and his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God? Except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I spend a lot of time thinking about how things need to be changed, how life can be made better, how, how people can 
receive more in their own lives, especially those who have very little. One of the drawbacks and problems with, with approaching life in this way is that I often find myself being quite critical. Now I work at it. I try not to be so. I try to at least have some more realistic appraisal of things in my life and in the life of those around me. But sometimes, and this is especially true if I'm with folks who are like-minded, I find myself talking over and over about how bad things are. How things really, really need to be changed. And what I have to do to make that happen and at some point in that whole process, it becomes something of a, woe is me. Now, I'm not here to say that things are great and wonderful everywhere. They're not. But seldom could we ever say that they are. Perhaps never could we ever say they are. What I'm talking about for myself is my own attitude about life and my own sense of of what happens in, in my participation. Now I've become aware lately that I've been a bit more critical for various reasons, I won't go into them, about how things are going in life in general. But one of the things that having this service does for me is it makes me consider just what I am thankful for. Now we do that. That's a pretty common thing that we do as we gather around Thanksgiving table. This one or the ones in our home. We begin to think about those things for which we're thankful and there's that litany of Thanksgiving items and things that we often, often identify. But I want to identify something for which I'm thankful. And it's this. I'm thankful that in life I can still be surprised. I'm thankful in life that there are things that don't always go as they used to go. Now that's quite a contrast because sometimes I lament the fact that things aren't like they used to be. But last night, some of us gathered here with a larger group of folks from our community. And most of you know that I grew up in a very rural area in Tennessee, and even to hang out with people of other races was unheard of, especially in the 50s and 60s. So to be able to gather together with people of various ethnicities and to be able to gather with people from other faiths and to come together and enjoy and in hymn and in prayer to be thankful was for me an absolutely incredible experience. And as we finished last night with the service, and people didn't leave, and they stood around, and they talked, and they began to get to know each other better, I thought, God is really present in this place. And God is now present in my life in a new and exciting way. And I thought, I'm thankful that this isn't like it used to be. So in my quirky sort of ways at looking at things, that's what I want to offer to you this morning. Maybe, 
maybe sometimes the things for which we are thankful are not the things just that we've been thankful for all along, but for something new, a revelation in our own lives, an experience of love and appreciation in a new place, and that today offers new hope. Father, for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord, for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant and seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be always with you.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in the last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And for supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. This is the Lord's Supper, God's feast for all of God's people. There's always an abundance here, and there is a place for you. You are invited and encouraged in, to feast at God's table.
And now in joyful thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received, let us pray together saying, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you have been fed at this table, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have received, give. And as you've heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from Creator, Son, and Spirit go with you. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.